Hey friends, good evening. My name is Skyla Mann and I'm a Young Living Diamond from Iowa and you have found your way to Thursday Night Live. So this is a wonderful opportunity for um, live learning every Thursday night. We have different topics each week. Sometimes we have guest speakers and sometimes you're stuck with me, but we always have a good time. And tonight it is my privilege to introduce a new friend to many of you. Um, this is Elizabeth Erickson. She lives in Texas and I have had an absolute blast getting to know Elizabeth and her family. So it's kind of a, a really cool package deal that you get with the Erickson tribe. And oh goodness, it says my internet connection is unstable. I'm gonna pray that it keeps working okay. Um, but Elizabeth and I met face to face for the first time in Australia, um, which was a treat to be able to, to meet there. But I really got to kind of get a glimpse into her specialty and what she's very passionate about when we were at convention. And I went to the Aroma Share event and um, got to really see all of her knowledge, well, not all of her knowledge. I didn't see all of what you know, but got to see the fruits of the labor um, that she has put together for all of us. And there's, there's a wonderful, I don't want to give away everything, Elizabeth, but there, I just want to tell you guys that there is a tool that she has created that is my kind of tool because my team knows, Elizabeth, that I'm all blue. So they're never going to get a cool tool like what you have created from me. <laughs> they know this. Cool. Okay. Um, but she's created this tool that is as easy as putting a DVD in and hitting play and sitting back and having a class where you look like a rock star. Now, how many of you would be interested in that kind of a tool? Just me? Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> it's fantastic. So she brings a, a real depth of knowledge um, about the brain, but also just about a lot of other, other things that are going to benefit us tremendously. So for all of you that are here live, I'm so, so glad that you're here because Elizabeth has graciously offered to um, field some questions afterwards. And so you get the benefit of that. Um, we don't generally record the Q&A part, so that's kind of a, um, a gift for those who are taking the time out to join us live. So Elizabeth, um, I, I'm gonna turn this over to you and invite you to share lots more about yourself and your background and, and just take it away. Thank you, thank you, Scott. Kyla, um, she is so sweet and thank you for having me on. It's so good to meet all of you online virtually. I love Zoom because you can be anywhere in the world. It's so great. Um, I actually met, um, I heard about Skyla before I met her. My mom bragged about you. I don't think you probably knew this, but she was like, okay, you're going to meet this one. Cause I was a nanny. I didn't, I'm not a diamond yet. My mom is a diamond. And so I went on the Australia um, diamond retreat as a nanny, um, which was really fun. But I heard about Skyla beforehand and was like, my mom was like, you need to be friends with her. She's great. So, um, we met then. But um, yeah, thank you for having me on. So a little bit more about me. Um, I'm going to see if I can change my view so I can see all of you. There we go. Um, a little bit more about me. Yeah, so I have been in Young Living about six years. I was very, um, what's the word, cynical? Um, not even skeptical, cynical about essential oils um, when my mom was introduced to it by a couple of friends, one of them being our upline, and she came home with a bottle of lavender and peppermint, and that was the starter kit at the time. And I rolled my eyes really hard and was thinking, this is a phase, it's gonna pass. Um, we, you know, like this will be like any other direct sales thing, it like fades in about, you know, three to six months. And um, I just, yeah, was not a believer. And when my sister, um, who's usually even more of a cynic than I am, started chasing people around the house with um, a bottle of peppermint shouting now non-compliant things um, and asking if they had certain predicaments, then I thought, man, if she's getting in, I probably should like believe in this thing. Well, at the time, um, I had just, was just about to finish college, uh, my undergraduate degree, and I had started having in college some um, 
uh, emotional things related to stress. And um, if it tells you anything, I soon tried Valor and Digize, and those two oils were the two oils that convinced me that this worked. So if that kind of gives you an idea of the things that I was dealing with in my life, um, those two oils really helped uh, alleviate some, um, some things and help boost my body. Um, so I uh, soon became a believer and kind of just naturally started sharing um, essential oils. So I started kind of building a business by default. And then um, four years ago, yeah, four years ago, I um, began grad school in um, applied cognition and neuroscience from University of Texas at Dallas. Dallas. I have a master's in applied cognition and neuroscience, so basically studied the brain for a few years. And when I got in there, um, I thought, well, this is really cool. Um, and I kind of see how there's a link with essential oils here. And so I started asking professors about it and they're like, oh, no, no, no. And I just realized that there was this huge gap between what we know in the essential oil community and natural health world and, um, and what allopathic medicine, Western medicine um, knows. And so I just started seeing that there's this gap and nobody's really, I mean, not nobody, but there's very few people that have bridged the gap. And so we've got a lot of great qualitative, great story data. And I'm sure all of you have your own stories of what product helped with what thing or what oil had, you know, amazing benefit. Um, but a lot of the scientific community has yet to see that. And a lot of the, you know, the people that like analytical data, you know, there's a lot of, I'm sure you've encountered a lot of men a lot of times that want to go, well, show me the money or show me the data. And so um, one of uh, a project that I started on a couple years ago, it actually started as uh, just a class I taught for our team here in Dallas um, under Jeanette Goodyear. She's a, a monthly class. And so I went and taught for her kind of on the brain and essential oils. And then out of that, it sort of grew into a project like Skyla mentioned that um, uh, I created a DVD. It works like a plug and play class. This is not a sales presentation, but I'm just telling you guys about it. Um, but it's like a plug and play class. In fact, I actually had the first person who purchased the DVD. It came out in June, um, do a, do a class last night. And so she had 12 people in home, new member or new, new people that uh, are prospects as well as, um, newer members. And, um, the cool thing is it's non-product specific. We're going to uh, go through some stuff tonight that are about the products, but you can kind of adapt this how you want to. You plug it in, you pass around the products, what you want. We talk about oils that are in the starter kit. So it makes for a really nice kind of alternative to intro to oils or the people that just want to build on, um, you know, their product knowledge. Uh, there's a lot of science and data in there. So it's a 40 minute DVD. And, um, and then I'm writing a book or I'm finishing a book right now that will come out uh, mid-October on the brain and essential oils. Both the book and the DVD are called Mind Your Brain, and it's um, optimizing your life and health using essential oils. So I am really passionate about explaining kind of the how and why behind essential oils. Um, I've been a big believer in like, we know that they work, but why do they work? Um, and distilling down that information and in specific to the brain. So we're going to dive into some of that tonight. Like I said, if you have questions, um, go ahead and either put them in the chat box. I've got it here. I'm, I'm kind of watching that and I can sort of answer as we go or you're welcome to save them to the end. Um, a couple disclaimers, uh, I, we are not, we're, this is an FDA compliant class, so uh, we are not going to be going over disease states, um, but I think it's okay because you are going to uh, learn a lot anyway. And then um, I'll just flash up this disclaimer just so that we've got it. Hold on, I'll screen share. Um, so can you guys see my screen? Yeah, perfect. Okay. So disclaimer here, I'm not a medical professional. I do have a master's in neuroscience, but I'm not a medical professional. This information is for your educational purposes only. If you're using prescription meds, consult your doctor. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and uh, Drug Administration. They're not intended to treat, diagnose, or cure disease. A decision to use or not use this information is the sole responsibility of you. And do your own research. Um, obviously, we all know that Young Living is the best. So <laughs> team Young Living. OK, so why are we talking about the brain tonight? I'll, flashes up while we're doing this. Um, it's because it is intricately designed. I, when I started grad, grad school, um, I remember going to my neuroanatomy class and the professor stood up in front of the class and she goes, okay, if you, you are about to freak out, do not freak out because I just need you to know that um, the brain is, as researchers say, that the brain is as unknown as the universe. We know about as much about the brain as we do about all of the stars and galaxies and planets and things that I don't pay a bunch of attention to. And I kind of breathed a sigh of relief because I went, okay, great. It's like 
this is a lot of information, but it's okay. Um, and and really, the reality is we know we know about this much. So um, what I think is really cool is what we do know is um, is that the brain is very intricately designed. Uh, when I uh, I had a friend who had a, a premature baby born at 29 weeks and. Um, they were worried that she was going to be blind. And at the same time, I was going through a, a sensation and perception class in grad school. And the baby was, um, you know, born very early in the NICU for a long time. And when she came out, about about four to six months, um, they started, like, doing vision tests. And, you know, they thought she was going to have to wear real thick glasses and all of this. Well, thank God the baby was fine. She's actually very bright. There's no delays. But what was so interesting was... At the same time, I was reading this particular quote that I have on the screen, and it says, the vast computational power of the human visual cortex cannot be overestimated. The brain of even a six-month-old child vastly outperforms the most sophisticated artificial vision systems yet designed. And I thought it was just such a great summary about, I'm going to stop screen sharing real quick. Um, I thought it was such a great summary. How do I do this? There we go. Um, I thought it was such a great summary of what, what we're talking about here, that um, God, I'm a Christian, and so God is so good that he designed um, our bodies and our brains that no matter how much technology we have, I believe that it's never going to catch up with how amazing the human body is and how it adapts to the environment. So even a premature baby that they're thinking is going to be born blind uh, or born with huge vision problems has a computational power that's... Um, in, like better than any artificial vision system. So I just think that's pretty cool. Um, so a couple things we're going to go over tonight. Uh, we are going to talk about the basics of brain health, how to keep your brain healthy, and um, some Young Living products that we can use. Um, feel free to take good notes. Um, all, of that, all of this data that we're going to be talking about is in the DVD that I mentioned. So if you are like freaking out that this is too much, like I've already created a resource for you. And you can get it later if you want to, or this is recorded, so um, don't, you know, write too fast. Um, feel free to absorb and don't feel overwhelmed. Um, we're going to talk about some of the basics on the how and why essential oils work with the brain, some of the chemistry, quantum physics, um, and then we're going to identify some key components of what some research studies are saying about essential oils and how they work. Um, so I've already made disclaimers, and all of you know what essential oils are, so I'm not going to go over that because I am going to assume that every single one of you is very well acquainted with this and probably teaches that to other people all the time. Um, so the context we're gonna talk about tonight is stress and how stress affects the brain. Um, I think, um, I will say this too, as I'm going through this, for those of you that are actively building a business or maybe you're wanting to share this resource with other people, um, I try to really approach this topic from a place that is applicable and compliant for everyone. And so the beautiful thing about talking about stress um, is that everyone has it and it's very compliant. So just as we're talking about this, kind of tuck that in the back of your brain because it's a great way to introduce people to essential oils, especially about the brain. A lot of times I have people come in, they go, well, so-and-so has such and such and such and such. And I'm like, that's not what we're talking about here. Um, but stress happens to everyone, from infants to elderly people. It doesn't matter. Um, much of the time, our, I, I just saw a naturopathic doctor last week, and he goes, "The reason we have rotten rust is the reason that most of us age. We have rotting in the, in the gut um, and oftentimes rust in terms of the oxidation of our bodies. And if we can solve those two, two, two issues, then we can live longer lives. Well, many times the rotten rest both comes because of stress. So we're going to talk about that tonight. Obviously, stress shows up in a variety of ways. It may be uh, digestive issues. It might be lack of sleep. It might be anger, um, uh, restless, restlessness, or um, I mean, just a variety of different ways. And it will show up differently for different people at different times. That's the context that we're going to talk about tonight. Um, so why we talked about a little bit why the brain is so important um the perspective i like to take is the difference between structure versus function so we're going to talk tonight both about structure and function um and you know it it's i love going to the farm because or any of the farms i went to the one in australia and then of course the one in um, idaho i've been to and one actually in israel and um the cool thing about the farms is i think that you get to actually observe let's lavender for instance in the ecosystem that it's growing in. And I think we, we think about the plants 
very easily we think about them um, in the terms of the sunlight affects them, the soil condition affects them. Um, you know, they're they're affected by whatever blight or bug may be happening. Um, so there's a lot of different things in this particular ecosystem that are affecting the growth and the constituents that are being developed in that plant. But we forget that about our bodies. Um, and the reality is most people, when they're looking at disease states or conditions or, or anything like that or alleviating certain issues, um, they forget that your body's an ecosystem. And the brain is the same way. The brain is housed in your head, but it's affecting the entire body and all of uh, the environment around you is, is affecting you. Uh, I had uh, somebody recently, they came and they were like wondering why they were having all of these this brain fog and different things. And, you know, well, she had just moved into a new apartment and uh, from Nashville to Dallas, so they had major life change. And the apartment had all brand new carpet and, uh, you know, had just been repainted. And so you've got environmental toxins that are affecting your body. The diet was different. Um, you know, there was major like life stressors um, happening in the middle of this move. So all of those things were contributing to brain fog. So um, I think sometimes approaching the structure and function of the brain from remembering that we are, we live in an ecosystem, our bodies are an ecosystem, kind of helps um, you approach it from a holistic view. And so I think, especially when people are alleviating things, you might find, for instance, for me, um, I, uh, you can alleviate one issue and then something else pops up and you go, well, man, why, why did that happen? But again, you live in an ecosystem and everything works biodynamically. Your body's always gonna be wanting to find some type of equilibrium. So understanding that as we talk about the context of the brain is really important. So when we talk about structure and function, we're talking about two different things. The structure is literally the structure of the brain, whether um, we have uh, both gray matter and white matter, you've got your body that's um, affected by your brain and your brain is affected by your body. And then the function, um, I like to break down in five different parts that are all affected by essential oils. And I'll say these a little bit slowly in case you're taking notes. Um, the functions of the brain include alertness, attention, cognition, memory, and emotional regulation. I'll say it again. The functions of your brain include atten alertness, attention, cognition, memory, and emotional regulation. So we're going to kind of touch on some of those tonight. Um, I like an, uh, using the analogy of hardware versus software. So um, I'm using my iPhone to have notes on the TV behind me, but um, my iPhone, I like like the actual structure of the iPhone is, well, the, hard, the hardware of the iPhone is the structure. So the casing, the um, glass plating on top, all of that, the chips inside, that's the hardware. And then the software is the actual applications that are loaded on your phone. Same thing for your computer. So when we talk about structure versus function, hardware versus software is kind of a nice way to do it. Or another analogy you could talk, you could think of is um, the interior of your house, uh, the decor that you have, the, the carpet, the wall color, all of those things are like the function of your brain and the structures, the actual roof and the walls. Um, so you could have, um, if you, let's say you were remodeling your, phone, your, your home, uh, the home structure actually stays the same and you just redecorate the inside, that would be like, um, you know, you were changing your thought patterns or working on your memory or working on your emotion or your ability to stay alert. Um, you can redecorate the home without changing the structure of the brain. The structure will affect the function and the function will affect the structure, uh, but they are two different things. Okay, so um, I'm going to put up a couple of screens for y'all so we can... See, can you see? All right. Okay. So we talked about hardware versus software, structure versus function. So we're going to talk about the peripheral nervous system versus the central nervous system. So the central nervous system is uh, also known as the CNS. And uh, that is basically everything, I'm giving you a real brief overview, is basically everything inside of the head. And that's including the cerebrum, which is the big brain, the cerebellum, it's the back of your head, and that's the little brain, and the brain stem. Um, we're gonna talk mostly about the cerebrum tonight. Um, the cerebellum is, is uh, responsible for a lot of different things, and it's actually very under-researched. Um, but among uh, 
what some of the things that cerebellum helps with the little brain um, is coordination and movement. Um, oftentimes when people <laughs> have too much alcohol and they're having issues with, um, you know, or even permanent alcohol damage, actually, it's oftentimes a cerebrum, uh, or excuse me, cerebellum issue. Uh, brainstem is almost all sensory input is passed through the brainstem on the way to the cerebrum and it's the coordination between the spinal column and the cerebrum. The peripheral nervous system is basically everything outside of the head. Um, it's attached to this, uh, the central nervous system, mostly through uh, the brainstem, but also through other connective nerve fibers. Um, and that, that those are distributed throughout the body. Again, if you guys have questions or if you need me to go over stuff, feel free to put it in the chat box and then I can kind of go back through it. So when we talk about this, uh, uh, the cerebrum, the big brain, there's uh, a few different lobes. I don't know if you can see my pointer, but I'll kind of go through this. Um, the frontal lobe, um, and we'll go back over these in a second. The frontal lobe um, is everything at the kind of the front of your head here. It's basically behind your forehead. Um, and the frontal lobe you can think of as the boss of the brain. So it's responsible for speaking, planning, judging, abstract thinking, personality aspects. It's um, actually the slowest to develop. So when your teenager is acting foolish and you're wondering if they, you know, what, why they're being dumb, it's probably because their frontal lobe, their, their prefrontal cortex is not fully developed. For most uh, women, it's developed between 18 and 20 and most men between 22 and 24. I, however, know some 30 some odd men who still don't have their frontal lobe completely developed, I think, but uh, that's another matter. Um, so that's the frontal lobe. It's kind of the boss of your brain, and it's really important for uh, emotional regulation and other things that we're going to talk about in a minute. The temporal lobe is next. It's kind of here below, right, kind of right around your ears, right above your ears on either side. Um, the brain is kind of split into two hemispheres, so if you think of it, um, if you were to split it in half, there's a right temporal lobe and a left temporal lobe. Um, the temporal lobe is primarily responsible for, uh, for um, comprehension of sound and speech. Um, speech production is on one side of the, temp of the brain, and then speech comprehension is on another side of the brain. Um, so, so temporal lobe is, is quite important, and there's a large portion of that that is devoted to um, speech comprehension and, and uh, also production. The parietal lobe is kind of up here um, above the, it borders the frontal lobe, temporal lobe, and occipital lobe. And the parietal lobe um, has the motor cortex, uh, which has, is responsible for your body positioning and your sense of touch. Um, and then occipital lobe is back here in the back of your head. Um, it is a large, massive brain that is dedicated entirely to vision. Um, we have a massive amount of brain, uh, what we call gray matter, um, dedicated just to vision and, and vision perception. Um, and then inside of the brain, uh, if you were to split it in half and look kind of right down the middle, um, we have what's called, we like to collectively call it the limbic lobe. It's actually um, different parts of the brain that sit sometimes in the, in, you know, it touches temporal lobe or frontal or whatever, but if you collectively call them the group, as a group, the fifth lobe of the brain, it's called the limbic lobe. Um, and this includes things like the hypothalamus, the amygdala, hippocampus, um, corpus callosum, thalamus, olfactory bulb. Some of this I'm sure y'all are probably familiar with, but um, very important for emotional regulation. It is a little bit of, uh, I, I know a lot of people like to say, well, the limbic lobe is the seat of your emotions. I think that's a little bit of a cop-out. Personally, um, it is highly important for emotional regulation. Um, but the cool thing about the brain is that it's a very intricately connected, and so, um, and it's highly adaptable. If one part, um, if one part, you know, you lose your sense of sight or you lose your sense of hearing, the other parts of the brain will actually make up for the sensations and perceptions that you're missing. So, um, although the limbic lobe is very important for uh, emotional regulation, um, it's not the only part that it plays in. So we'll come back to that in just a little bit. Two types of brain cells we're going to talk about um, are neurons and glia. And this is important, again, when we're, talk we're talking about the structure right now, it's important to understand um, because as we talk about the products, you'll see how uh, the products that Young Living has uh, support the structure as well as the function. So two types of cells we're going to talk about are the neurons and the glia. So this is a picture primarily of neurons. Um, you see here in the middle that neurons are electrically active cells. Um, they are basically, uh, think of it, uh, the wiring of the brain. 
Um, I like to use the analogy of a telephone pole. So you have here the uh, kind of the base of the telephone pole is that large part called uh, the soma or the cell body, which contains the nucleus of the cell. The data comes in through, um, I'm sorry, I don't know if you guys can see my pointer, but you can just imagine. Uh, the data comes in through the dendrites, which are where information is received. I like to think of that as the incoming, uh, incoming wire into the telephone pole body. Oops. And uh, so then the body uh, of the, the cell here is kind of the telephone pole. And then it goes out through the next telephone pole called the axon. And the axon goes to axon terminal. So um, that would be the connection point to the next dendrites um, on the next neuron. And one way you can use, uh, some people use the analogy, and actually these are called dendritic arbors because you can see dendrites. Um, there are multiple dendrites on any one neuron but then there's only one axon going out so it's a little bit different than a telephone pole in the sense of it's not a one-to-one -one connection you can have multiple neurons having uh, multiple connections at any given time because of the dendrites that yellow thing you see around the axon are what we call glia cells and glia cells are known as a group they're known as a group called glia cells there's multiple types of them glia cells are, provide support nutrition insulation and help with the signal transmission in uh, neurons glia cells are kind of like the glue or the scaffolding that help hold the brain together so when you hear the terms white matter versus gray matter white matter is neurons it's all the electrically active um, or excuse me, gray matter is the neurons, all of the electrically active cells, and then glia cells are the white matter or the connective tissues. They're actually really underrated and they don't get talked about a lot, but glia cells are really, really important. And you, um, you'll, you're hearing more about glia cells or uh, uh, what we like to call them, some, there's a type of uh, glia cell called the myelin sheath, which is this, that's that kind of fatty layer, that yellow fatty thing that you see there surrounding the axon. And the reason that myelin sheath are important in, in some um, things like multiple sclerosis um, or other like degenerative diseases like that, um, it's actually a myelin sheath deficiency. But what's interesting is that some people um, who have uh, PTSD, researchers are actually diagnosing PTSD the same way that they would diagnose um, neurological conditions like MS. So there's some curiosity in terms of if um, some emotional issues like PTSD actually might have uh, a myelin deficiency or glia cell deficiency, a fatty, fatty cell deficiency in the brain. So that's a little side note. Um, all right, so in supporting the structure, I'm gonna talk about a few products. Most of these you're probably familiar with, but um, so Ningxia Red is, a, I have my personal bottle here. I don't have any <laughs> beautiful looking bottles, so this came straight out of my fridge, <laughs> but, um, I just had a little uh, little Ningxia right before we came on. Uh, Ningxia, I, I love Ningxia for, uh, you know, I knew it was great for the cardiovascular system. I knew it was great for your eyes and a lot of other things. I knew it was great for um, helping maintain normal blood sugar and blood pressure levels. But I did not know that it was so good for the brain until I started diving into research. And it turns out that wolfberry is highly researched in Asia, and it is um, very beneficial for your body and for your brain specifically. Of course, we know Ningxia Red um, is a, a wolfberry puree, and it also has plum, aronia, cherry, blueberry, and pomegranate juices, which are great for antioxidant uh, purposes. Um, but also, you've got oils inside of Ningxia Red, including lemon, orange, yuzu, tangerine, and um, some of those have been, uh, I could go into it for days in terms of lemon helping with gut mucosa, um, which is really important for helping your brain, um, helping boost your immune system. There's a lot of different reasons why it's good. Um, also, the fact that it's low on the glycemic index, sometimes inflammation in the brain can happen because of high blood sugar levels. So the fact that it's low in the glycemic index is really important. But um, one of the things I love is this study here from Asia on the wolfberry fruit, and it's um, specifically on um, how it protects cells from beta amyloid neurotoxicity, which is a known factor in contributing to brain cell degeneration. Um, if you were to do some research on beta amyloid neurotoxicity, um, you would see that there's a lot of uh, aging associated conditions in, especially it's, that are a concern in the United States. Um, I'm saying this 
as compliantly as I can. So, uh, but beta amyloid neurotoxicity is a is a known factor in, um, like I said, in brain cell degeneration and especially associated with aging. So um, the thought would be that Ningxia red is great for helping fight natural and normal aging processes. <laughs> um, Again, I mentioned the uh, polysaccharides help to maintain blood sugar nor uh, levels in normal ranges. Um, components of the wolfberry fruit have been shown to reduce DNA damage um, and uh, MDA, which is a biomarker for oxidative stress. So it helps with um, just, the, again, the rotten rust. It helps with the rust that happens in our bodies. Um, and it's great in that it has high protein content. Tryptophan um, is an amino is a, comes from amino acids. Um, and it's one of the precursors to serotonin in your brain, which helps with emotional um, mood regulation. So I do two to four ounces um, for a healthy adult is kind of a good recommendation for an Um red. That is one of the things that helps to support the structure of the brain for a variety of reasons. So Ningxia nitro, this was my saving grace through grad school. Um, I would do, and I actually, uh, this is a tip in case you haven't, Try this. Um, I actually mix my Nixia Nitro with my Nixia Red because they enhance each other. So if you have not tried doing the both at the same time, um, I think that they, they uh, balance each other out. Um, so, or not balance each other out, they enhance each other. So uh, Nixia Nitro is great in that it contains a bunch of different brain boosters, including black pepper, essential oil, nutmeg, vanilla, chocolate, yerba mate. Yerba mate is um, wonderful on its own, but I love that Young Living is smart enough to put yerba mate in Ningxia Nitro. Yerba mate is a, if you don't know, if you're not familiar with it, it's a plant um, out of South America, I think usually Ecuador, that um, is in the same family as caffeine, but it, or uh, as uh, coffee and things that are caffeinated, but it's, it's not a caffeine. Um, and it actually gives your brain kind of the same focus as you would with caffeine without having any of the jitters or side effects. Um, this also also has vitamins B3, B6, B9, B12. Um, we're not going to go into it in detail, but B vitamins are super important for your brain. Um, super B is an awesome supplement from Young Living if you're specifically needing B vitamins. But I love that Ningxia Nitro, you get all those B vitamins in one nice little tube. Um, it has green tea extract, Korean ginseng. Um, and what I, one of the things I like about Ningxia Nitro is that because the D-ribose that's in it, it actually helps, um, like any, the little bit of caffeine that is in here, the D-ribose actually helps to balance it out. So you don't get the jitters the way that you would with a lot of other things. Um, it just gives you a nice little boost. And, uh, and, and not just an energy boost, but actually a cognitive boost between the black pepper, um, B vitamins, the green tea extract, ginseng. Okay. Next thing is MindWise. I don't have the new nice pretty branding on there, but I do have the nice pretty bottle here. Uh, MindWise is awesome. Uh, it is a, a healthy fat that's a vegetarian source of healthy fat. So Young Living has a couple of different um, things. Like we talked about the pig, and, uh, I, didn't, I don't think use this analogy, but when you think about the neuron and the, and the myelin sheath that surrounding the axon of the neuron, I like to think of it like a pig in a blanket. So that the uh, blanket surrounding that neuron that helps the transmission, it's the, it's the um, tubing around the copper wire on the telephone pole that helps the transmission of your, your electrical signals go faster, that gets supported by healthy fats. And so one of the best sources of healthy fats is mind-wise in the Sasha Inchi nut oil. Um, it's a vegetarian uh, healthy omega-3 and omega-6. Uh, uh, and the cool thing, um, there's actually a lot of emotion, there's a lot of data and research showing how um, having a good level of omega-3s and omega-6s um, fatty acids actually help to alleviate some different emotional um, issues. So um, a lot of times when people are, and you see this uh, in places where there's not a lot of sunlight and they have to like, supplement um, with D, uh, vitamin D and and omega threes. So, uh, MindWise is uh, was developed specifically for um, helping with the aging brain, um, and also with um, specific conditions um, related to some behavioral issues and other things like that. So, um, I think it's a, a must have for anyone that's got any kind of emotional things. It also has lithium orotate in it, um, which lithium has been known um, to help in, in different research studies with um, certain emotional issues. So. It's great for, uh, this is great for helping with um, roles and vision, nervous system function, all of that stuff. 
Omega Gis 3 is another great healthy fat. Um, this is coming from a fish oil uh, complex, so people that are vegan would probably prefer the, the other option, uh, mind-wise. Um, but what I love about Omega Gis 3 is that um, you are actually getting um, not just good CoQ10 um, and vitamin D3, but they, they, Young Living is so intentional. I don't, like, the more that I find out about how they formulate products, the more that I'm like, I love you guys so much. And um, one of the things I love is that, you're, so your body cannot convert, um, convert things to Omega-3s correctly um, if you were to just take most most of the time when people take like an omega-3 omega-3 supplement um, on the market their body's not actually converting it it's just dumping the nutrients but young living is so smart and that they put the precursor to what your body needs to convert uh, things into uh, coq10 and so i'm going to try and pronounce this correctly i think it's per there's the precursor. I don't remember how you pronounce it, so I'm just not even going to try. But it's a great product. And uh, so those are pills, and they have pills in them. Again, researchers, research has shown omega-3s can help systemic inflammation from everyday movement and support cardiovascular joint, eye, and brain health. Um, and some of why we talked about that is, again, supporting the pig and blanket. Okay, so I would be doing y'all a disservice if we talked about brain health and I did not mention the brain gut connection. We're not going to go into this. I could spend a lot of time on this, but um, Life9 is an essential product for helping support your brain because you're supporting your gut. Like I said, I got introduced to Young Living because of Valor and Digize. Um, and so I was supporting my brain, but also having to support my gut because I didn't know that the two were linked at the time. So a lot of my emotional issues were actually related to my gut. Life9 is an awesome probiotic. Most of us are deficient in the healthy uh, gut flora and the healthy bacteria in our gut. And so um, what I love about, again, the intentionality of Young Living is they actually, um, so there's nine different strains of beneficial bacteria uh, in, in Life9. But Young Living is so intentional that they know, because this is a product that once you open it, you need to refrigerate it. They know that, um, that it is going to be shipped uh, in hot weather. And so during the summer months, Young Living actually packs it with extra uh, probiotic in it so that by the time it reaches your house, if there's been any kind of heat, it's what you're getting to your door is awesome. These are time-released uh, capsules, and so it actually doesn't get released until it's um, in, I think, your large intestine. Um, okay, so I'm going to turn off screen share for now, and we're going to go over a couple other stuff, and I will share some slides in a minute. So we talked about um, supporting the structure of the brain. Let's talk a little bit about the function and how the brain works. So when um, any kind of brain input comes in, Sorry, skipping ahead so I can make sure I got my notes in front of me. How are y'all doing so far? Not overwhelmed? We're good? Okay, perfect. Um, so we talked about the hardware. We're going to talk about some of the software of the brain. So I like to think about uh, this part when, uh, let's say there's a sensory stimuli. It could, be, um, it could be a visual input. It could be, you know, somebody running across the street. Uh, let's actually, yeah, we'll use the analogy of a car accident. Somebody ran into the street and you're stopping your car really quickly, um, you're immediately getting some quick visual input, you're getting, uh, you know, you're hearing things, you're, you're processing all at the same time. So if you give attention to that stimulus, to the person running across the street, um, then your brain is actually going to be making thoughts about it, um, and which are cognitions. Um, so you have alertness, you give it your attention, um, and then it develops into cognition. And then what happens is that you're beginning to encode memories. Um, we have multiple different types of memory, including um, short-term memory, long-term memory. If, um, if you're dwelling on that stimulus long enough um, and you're giving it actually, especially in a situation like that where there's high emotion, high alertness, you're probably gonna encode part of that memory and it's going to sit in your, your short-term memory. And as you're thinking about it, as you're dwelling on it, it actually gets encoded into your long-term memory. And then 17 years later, your grandkid's asking you, you know, your child or whatever is asking you about that one time. And you're able to recall this memory um, from this person running into the street. So what happens with our brains is that um, sometimes when, uh, when we're dealing with a lot of stress, your brain gets overloaded and 
two things, well, multiple things can happen, but um, sometimes we, what we don't realize is that we don't encode memory correctly and we don't encode emotion correctly. Um, so a lot of times this trauma and the stress that we have in our lives is related to the fact that um, we were, our brains are not processing information correctly. The beautiful part about essential oils is that they help to interact with looping thoughts, they help to heal with emotions, they help to deal with memory. Um, and so a lot of times we talk about, oh yeah, you know, we've got all these great emotional blends and we know like I know peace and calming works. I use it all the time. I use it on my dogs. I use it on, on kids. Um, but why does it work? Well, some of it is that it's actually going in at the cellular level and helping to alleviate some of the stress and trauma. Um, so, um, Eric R. Candle, a Nobel Prize winning neuropsychiatrist, shows how our thoughts and even our imaginations can get under the skin or the DNA of our, um, of our bodies and they can turn certain genes on and certain genes off. Your brain is constantly adapting. Um, with, this is called in uh, the science community neuroplasticity. Um, and so it's the ability of your brain to change over time. Neurons do, new neurons do grow. It's a myth that you're born with all of the, the brain cells that you're ever gonna have, but they grow very, very slowly. Unlike other cells in your body that turn over much more quickly, neurons can take a long time to grow. Um, so, uh, so your brain is constantly changing, but what you give attention to, what you think about, what you apply emotion and memory to, those things are the thoughts that are gonna grow, and that will determine, like I said, we talk, we're in a ecosystem, what you think about will actually manifest in your life. Um, 75 to 98% of the mental, physical, and behavioral illnesses that we have come from our thought life, and science has proven that over and over. So whatever you think about most will grow. Um, I like to use the analogy of, of a seed. If you plant a, a lemon seed, you're gonna get a tree that grows lemons. If you plant an apple tree, it's gonna produce a tree that grows apples, what thoughts you're paying attention to, if it's fear, if it's negativity, um, if it's harmony, if it's um, acceptance, whatever it is, those things are going to begin to manifest in your life. And those dendritic arbors, those thought, those neurons in our brain that look like trees actually begin to come to life. So there's a saying that neurons, I'm sure it's green again, um, neurons that fire together or that wire together fire together. So we talked about uh, the electrical signals, which are neurons. And what happens is when the brain gets excited, when you see that person running across the street and you, your, your neurons begin firing and going, person running across the street. Um, and the more that you give attention to that, the more those neurons are going to fire. Well, the neurons that, that fire together end up wiring together. They look kind of like train tracks going, um, you know, what, that go together and they start moving together and they literally become like uh like a train track in the structure in the in the uh, gray matter of your brain and that's actually sometimes why you see little grooves, grooves in the brain over time um is through continuing to have neuron um paths neurons are not the only type of um a process that happens in your brain. There's also um, neurotransmitters and other things like that uh, called ligands, which we're not going to get into tonight. Um, if you have the book, um, which I'm totally blanking on the name right now, but it's by Candace Pert, um, Emotions. It's on emotions. I don't remember what the title is right now. I have the book in the other room, but it's by Candace Pert. There's a bunch of us in the Young Living community that have it. Um, Biology of Belief, that's what it is. Biology of Belief, she is the woman who, uh, the, <laughs> she's the woman who uh, found the, uh, the, that there are neurotransmitters that actually regulate emotions. So all of those things kind of play a part. I go into a little bit more detail in the DVD on all of that, but so again, we're using the analogy of a train track. Well, what happens if, um, let's, ha let's say that uh, maybe the, the car wreck or the person running across the street, you might hit them as maybe the wrong uh, analogy to use. Let's say that you've been called stupid all of your life um, and that those are thought processes, those are train tracks that go through your brain. And so when, um, you know, let, when you get triggered or when you, you have some kind of sensory input, immediately thoughts come up that go, man, I'm stupid. That's because we've, you've dwelt on that thought and those neurons have begun firing together and wiring together. Well, how do you stop it? Uh, what I love is, according to Dr. Caroline Leaf, neurons that don't get enough signal, the rehearsing of the negative event or thought, will start firing apart, wiring apart, pulling out, and destroying the emotion attached to the trauma. 
In addition, certain chemicals like oxytocin, which bonds and remolds chemicals, dopamine, which increases focus and attention, and serotonin increases feelings of peace and happiness. They all start flowing around the traumatic thoughts, weakening them even more. This all helps to disconnect and desynchronize the neurons. If they stop firing together, they will no longer wire together. This leads to wiping out or popping those connections and rebuilding new ones. So if you've been told all your life, I'm stupid, I'm stupid, I'm stupid, or you're stupid, you're stupid, you're stupid, and you begin to believe that, actually stopping that thought and going, I'm really intelligent. Actually, I'm intelligent. Every time the old I'm stupid train tracks begin to die and you begin to build new train tracks um, with a positive thought. This is in um, cognitive psychology, a, a, a technique called cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, but really simply, it's just unidentifying with the trauma behind an old thing and then we identifying with the new uh, thought. Again, this is a natural process. Your brain's going to take over time, neuroplasticity, but um, it usually takes days or weeks or months. And the cool thing about essential oils is that uh, they actually speed up the process. So the reason why that happens is the chemistry, one of the reasons is the chemistry of essential oils. So we're going to talk a minute about why essential oils work. If you, um, the, some of this info is taken from Dr. David Stewart's um, chemistry of essential oils made simple, which I don't know how simple it is because it's still real thick and real complicated, but <laughs> it's probably simpler than most. Um, so uh, this is what's known as the PSM. I call it the PSM protocol. I think he uses PMS, but um, technically in sequence, it's PSM. And it's for the constituents of essential oils, uh, including the phenols, sesquiterpenes, and monoterpenes. Um, so basically, this again, using the analogy of the iPhone, um, let's say you have a corrected application on your, your iPhone or your computer. Um, so what do you do? You go take it to the Apple store and they go, oh man, I'm so sorry, Skyla. This stinks that your Facebook application isn't working. Hold on. We're going to delete the Facebook application, take off all of the bad data, and we're going to clean the memory on the phone, and then we're going to restore and reload the application, and then it should work. Right? Well, that's exactly what the PSM protocol does with your brain. So it actually goes in because the molecules of essential oils are so small, they can cross the blood brain barrier. Um, so they actually go in and they clean the receptor sites of the cells. That's the phenols. Um, that, or it could be ketones or alcohols, but for this purpose, it's phenols. Um, then the sesquiterpenes go in and they delete the bad info from cellular memory. And then the monoterpenes go in and they restore or awaken the correct information in the cell's memory or the DNA. Um, and Dr. Stewart talks about how there are, uh, there's kind of an ideal compound. Lavender's a really good uh, an example, tea tree is another one of a really good example of a balanced PSM. There are most of our emotional blends. The reason why they work so well is that they're balanced PSMs. Um, but there are some single oils that are really balanced. And again, uh, melaleuca alternifolia, lavender, um, and I think hyssop is another one. Um, Dr. Stewart talks about. Um, I had a great quote that just disappeared. It'll come back to me. Um, I, uh, one thing I want to note on um, on essential oils and uh, and specifically with emotional issues is I in general have not seen it be where it's uh, necessarily like an instantaneous uh, you know suddenly oh my gosh the memory is gone it's not like that the trauma attached to the memory or the pain or the sadness or whatever the emotion is, the negative emotion attached to the memory or the feet or the experience that you're dealing with um, tends to go away. I'll give you an example. I, um, I don't normally, um, I don't normally, how are we doing on time, Skylar? Are we like 10 more minutes? Okay. Um, I don't normally have a lot of anger and usually if I'm experiencing anger, it's because something has hit like real deep pain wise. Well, I was having an argument with my sister and uh, we were real close, but um, I just was so angry. It was very hurtful. It was a very just messy situation. And I was doing everything I could do, prayer, like, uh, uh, you know, apply. I, I think, I don't know if I had applied an oil at this point. I think I had like diffusing or something, um, but I did prayer and I'm like, you know, Calm, trying to calm down, deep breathing, all these different things, and like trying to unidentify with the emotion, and it this anger was just not going. So I did a really basic trauma release, which I'm going to teach y'all in a minute, um, using um, 
I think I just used like frankincense. I think I just grabbed frankincense, my favorite oil. And I just grabbed frankincense and I applied it to my forehead and then I applied it over my liver and um, into my chest. And I just did the quick trauma release that I'll show y'all. And no joke, within seconds, the anger was gone. And if I tried to conjure it back up, it like didn't, it didn't work. Um, and I specifically applied to my liver because that's where usually anger and bitterness is stored. And I know that from, um, from a book that I'll show y'all in a minute. It's a great resource if you're dealing with emotions. Um, but I, I, this is my experience doing multiple sessions of inner healing um, and counseling and different things like that, sessions with other people and um, watching it over and over time and time again the trauma or the pain attached to whatever emotion or memory that you're dealing with goes away, but you don't, you don't remember it differently, if that makes sense. And that's because of the beauty of um, essential oils and how they go in, they clean the receptor sites, and then they restore the new correct information. So that's why it's really important that you're not just going unidentified with anger, but you're replacing it with what you are desiring, whether it's peace or whatever. Um, Okay, so I want to talk briefly about how um, stress and trauma are processed in the brain, and then we're going to go into um, showing you a quick emotional release and a couple of scientific studies on um, why uh, lavender and frankincense and some of those oils are so powerful. So um, I'm going to go back to, real quickly, this um, photo here. Um, so I want to talk briefly about how, uh, again, how stress and trauma are processed. So again, let's say you have um, somebody running into the street. That's a great kind of, and you're in a car and you're about to possibly hit them. That's a really uh, situation where you're either going to feel fight or flight or freeze. Um, those are very natural responses to stress or trauma or things that are, uh, that your body needs to be alerted to. Not all stress is bad. Stress helps us to get out of bad situations quickly. If you are about to hit somebody with your car, you wanna know real quickly to slam on your brakes and stop. Your, your body's gotta process that, your brain has to process that in order to stop you um, from something really bad. But too much stress and too much trauma over time um, actually wears out our brain and our body, and that's where we have a lot of disease states um, and issues that come when the stress is not turned off. So um, what happens in, when you see that person running across the street, you have attention and alertness, and you have some sort of mental processing that's happening, uh, cognition. Well, what happens is that your brain um, is going to, your, your fire, their, a fire alarm begins to go off. Um, and the fire alarm is the amygdala. It's that uh, little kind of green thing right on the end. Um, the amygdala is uh, a fire alarm that, it calls the 911 operator to send for help. The 911 operator is your hypothalamus and your pituitary gland. Um, and they call the emergency responders and they send the emergency responders um, to send signals to your body to react appropriately. So the emergency responders are adrenaline and stress hormones. That's why, again, you have fight, flight, or freeze because adrenaline and stress hormones begin coursing through your body. And one of the stress hormones is cortisol. Um, again, you see cortisol when it's not turned off correctly, then um, that's when you have excess weight gain and you have usually inflammation and other issues in your body. But emergency responders, adrenaline and stress and cortisol and other stress hormones are highly important. We need them. The emergency responders, they show up and there's usually a fire chief on the scene and they're gonna show up to the fire and the fire chief is gonna oversee the operation and make sure that there's enough emergency responders to uh, respond to put out the fire. Um, well, your fire chief is your hippocampus and hippocampus is right there next to the amygdala. Um, and that communicates back then to the 911 operator, your hypothalamus, hey, the fire alarm's still blaring, but we have enough emergency responders, you don't need to send any more. So once the hypothalamus receives the information that fire alarm, you know, we're good, there's enough people on the scene, then it sends information to the prefrontal cortex, which again is this part right up front, that's the boss of your brain, and the prefrontal cortex is you're doing your thinking and your reasoning, and that sends a signal to calm down and turn off the alarm. So again, prefrontal cortex, not a part of the limbic lobe, but it's the boss and it's kind of regulating all of this. So let me break this down. Part of what's really important to understand is when your fire alarm is going off, and fire alarm can go off not just because of stress or trauma, but actually because of pain. The same of your cortical spinal tract that, 
that um, shoots the pain signals up to your brain actually affects your brain the same way that happens with stress and trauma. So I actually had a, a friend, she's uh, dealing with some, uh, some chronic pain issues right now, and she was saying how she was having a really hard time last week um, with emotional regulation. She's crying, she's angry, all of these things. And I said, well, it makes sense. You're in pain, your body's in pain all the time. It's as if you are basically going through massive emotional trauma at the same time. Your brain doesn't know how to process. Um, well, what happens uh, is that your amygdala and your hippocampus are not just uh, responsible for emotional regulation, but they're actually highly responsible for memory. So um, often what happens is that when you're in the midst of fight, flight, or freeze, when your fire alarm is going off, you may not be encoding memories correctly. So people that are in emotional distress or maybe in pain are probably not only not processing the world correctly, but they're not recording and consolidating those memories. Um, we see this a lot with people with PTSD. Their prefrontal cortex is not telling the rest of their brain, hey, calm down. We have enough emergency responders. You don't need to send anymore. So their brain is just looping emotion all of the time, and their amygdala and their hippocampus are not getting any relief. So this is one of the great ways that essential oils help. Um, did I accidentally stop screen sharing? Sorry, y'all. Hold on just one second. And I don't know why this isn't working like this. Sorry. There we go. Um, so one of the great things about why using what you have works, and I'm a big believer in this, is that again, a lot of our emotional blends are um, they're containing single oils like Ylang Ylang, like spruce, frankincense, lavender, rose, Idaho blue spruce, balsam fir, cedarwood, lemon. And so I, a lot of times, will instruct people to reach for even the single oils that they have. Um, if you've got blends, awesome. But Valor Gate happened for a reason. And it's because we got so dependent on blends that um, we didn't know what to do when they were gone. So I like understanding the constituents in oils and why they work. So there's some really basic um, constituents in some of these emotion, uh, some of these singles and what are in our emotional blends uh, that are, are super helpful, including uh, super helpful for the brain and the mind, including alpha-pinene, linalol, eugenol, cenol, and limonene. Um, those are in oils like Ylang Ylang and frankincense. Um, so I want to go a show you a couple studies. Um, linalol is a, a one of the main constituents. Can you guys still see my screen okay? Okay. Hopefully you can. Um, linalol is one of the main constituents in, um, in lavender. It's also in Ylang Ylang. And this study um, talks about how effects uh, of linalol, they, said, they showed specifically how it helps in um, alleviating anxiety, social interaction, and aggressive behavior in mice. Um, and they did this, I think, orally. Um, what I love is that um, depending on how you're wanting to affect the brain, you can use them. Um, you know, obviously we use them in three different ways, primarily um, aromatically, topically, or um, through ingestion. So um, many times, and I'll go over this in a second, but many times um, directly inhaling is kind of one of my favorite ways to use oils for, uh, for emotional regulation. And so this study talks about smelling lavender and rosemary and decrease the stress hormone cortisol. Uh, which we just talked about. That's what, that's the emergency responder that gets dumped into your body. And that, um, and, and reducing cortisol helps protect the body from oxidative stress. Um, another research study found that lavendula tincture may be of therapeutic benefit in the management to mild to moderate depression as an adjuvant therapy. That was an oral um, application. Uh, this is one of my favorite studies on frankincense. Again, I joke that if I Frankincense is my favorite. I joke that if I were on Naked and Afraid, that show where you can only take one item to a deserted island, I would take frankincense. Um, but frankincense uh, contains incessal acetate, which is a constituent of the Boswellia resin. And uh, this mod research found that it modulates the hypoth hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis um, and influences hippocampal gene expression leading to beneficial behavioral effects supporting its potential as a novel treatment of depressive life disorders. In English, that means that it's going to help to turn off the fire alarm in your brain. Um, so that is really, uh, really beneficial. Uh, 
couple other things I want to go over is, uh, is that sometimes it's not just one application. Um, I love this quote from Dr. Stewart when, uh, when he's talking about, uh, it's talking about the PMS protocol or PSM protocol. Uh, a lot of times people will be like, well, I just did it, you know, like I did it one time and it didn't work. Well, I, I ascribe to Dr. Minky's like use enough. It's often we don't use enough, often enough, long enough. So um, Dr. Stewart talks about when the basic errors, um, whether it's trauma, stress, emotion, whatever, has been corrected as is possible with the PSM protocol, the problem disappears. But it can take time, like days, weeks, or months, but it also can be instantaneous. After a true healing, the disease or condition won't return unless we continue to engage in the lifestyle, the thought pattern, the emotional state, the bad habits, toxic environments, or other activities that brought that disease or condition upon us in the first place. Thus, it's within your control to prevent backsliding, to prevent a relapse. This commitment to a revised lifestyle following a healing is called repentance in the Bible. Um, I love uh, I love that quote because I think it's such a great um, kind of encouragement that it's not a one time and done thing. This is an ongoing thing, and again, we live in uh, a dynamic environment. Your bodies are dynamic environments, so sometimes you can deal with one. And actually, this is this is my experience in the last few weeks. I've been in like major life transition, so I feel like I deal with one fire, and then there's like another fire to put out over here. So I'll like deal with fear over here, or deal with stress over here in, in something. And then, you know, I got to grab a different oil and tackle it in a different way. And so um, a lot of times, uh, just understanding that from the get-go kind of helps you feel and helps you empower other people to feel some relief in that this is an ongoing lifestyle change. Um, before I take some questions, I just want to show you guys a really easy way. I mentioned earlier I did that, like, trauma release when I was dealing with anger. And um, this is something that I do on a daily basis. And I felt... Um, to tonight, like there's a lot of different emotions we could tackle, but I actually felt um, that overwhelmed was the was the uh, emotion that we were going to tackle tonight. So I looked it up. This is a great resource if you don't have it. Um, I think you can get it. I think it's at LSP um, Life Science Publishing, but it's uh, releasing emotional patterns with essential oils. And it's so funny because I have a couple of girls in my organization who. I don't know why they didn't know that I had this book, but I was at their house a couple nights ago and they have like highlighted all of their issues <laughs> and they've been like applying oils, like all the different places. And I was like, yeah, guys, that's awesome. But what's interesting is that, um, all of their, their root places are all the same, like the manifestations of, uh, of the different, it's different emotions, but they all have the same, um, root places in their bodies. So um, I looked up overwhelmed and actually, uh, so the, the thing that I'm going to teach you is a very simple way to kind of utilize this book or utilize, um, utilize just unidentifying with the, the negative thought pattern and then identifying with the positive one. Um, so overwhelmed is what I'm going to do. If you want to do this with me, you're welcome to do it. You can just repeat it after I'll kind of go a little bit slowly. But um, I learned this originally from Dr. Kareen Allen, who is um, her website is brainadvance.org, and she is a Young Living uh, member and is awesome, and she's a neuroscientist as well. And so what was really cool was the first time that I was, I think it was maybe my first or second convention, and we were in a room of people, and nobody, this was like before the days of compliance, but um, they weren't, they were dealing with emotion stuff anyway. Um, but what was really interesting is I think we dealt with fear or something like that, and suddenly this man goes, Oh my gosh, uh, my, uh, my, um, shoulder just got unlocked. Well, what happens is that when your body, when your brain isn't processing stress and trauma rightly, then it's just dumping the negative emotion into the body. And so he didn't, his shoulder locked because of, uh, trapped emotion. So you just take, um, the oil and you put a couple drops. I have vetiver here, which is really viscous. So, um, this has been my oil of the day. Um, so I just take a couple drops and I apply it uh, directly to my forehead and then usually to the back of my head right here, which is the brain stem. Um, and then I apply uh, one hand over my heart and one hand over my chest, as well as directly inhaling. The most direct access to your brain is actually um, the cribriform plate right here at the top of your nasal cavity. That's the only exposed part of your brain right there. So directly inhaling is the fastest way to get it into your brain. Um, but I do like doing this as well. So then uh, you just say, I choose to release the trauma behind. And I'll let y'all repeat. I choose to release the trauma behind. The feeling of being overwhelmed that no longer serves me in a positive and productive way. 
And then you repeat this three times. And the reason that you do that, or twice, twice more, the reason that you do this three times is actually connecting spirit, soul, and body. So I choose to release the trauma behind the trapped emotion of feeling overwhelmed that no longer serves me in a positive and productive way. I choose to release the trauma behind the trapped emotion of feeling overwhelmed that no longer serves me in a positive and productive way. And then you choose the opposite, which according to this book is vision. So I choose vision. I choose vision. I choose vision. And then you say, I believe vision. Or I believe I have vision. I believe I have vision. And then I manifest I have vision. 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 So it's that simple. Um, I love it because I can use it with kids. I can use it with um, other people. It's, it's not religious associated. Um, it's, it's very simple. It's very easy. Um, and that's the fastest way to, and most effective way that I've found. There's a lot of other therapy techniques. I love aroma freedom technique and a lot of other things. Um, but this is just a fast and easy way that just allows the oils to go in both topically and aromatically and um, allows that PSM protocol as well as even the quantum, we didn't even get into quantum physics tonight but there's the quantum physics part of that um so before i turn it back over to skyla and answer any questions that y'all might have i know we went a little bit long sorry um but i just wanted to remind you that i have a dvd if you want even if you want this and more information it's 40 minutes so it's a little bit more brief um and it's just a great plug and play class so you literally it's totally compliant you just stick it in and you uh, can use whatever products you want we kind of go through some similar information tonight um some in a little bit more depth and then i have the book coming out mid-october i have a special um, for Team Young Living. So if you uh, decide you want either the DVD or just the book, which will be shipping mid-October, or we have a combo pack um, where you can get both at the same time, uh, that is, uh, the promo code is TEAMYL, and it's for 10% off. So uh, you just enter that coupon code online, TEAMYL. And uh, the, the uh, website is, um, I'll type it here, it's mindyourbrain.online. And um, thank you guys so much for having me. I will stick around for questions if y'all have them. Um, and then shoot me an email if you would like to as well. Um, and thank you so much for your attention. And um, I'm really honored. Elizabeth, thank you. Oh, my word. I feel like I've just gone back to college <laughs> and had a really fun class on the biology of and the function of the brain. So yes, I wish you were there when I had been there. Um, this was this was really fascinating. I I can tell you that I learned new things tonight. How about the, the rest of you? I mean, it, that's the thing about this is that just a different perspective. You bring a, a whole different set of you know knowledge and background to the table, and I loved it. So. Um, I am totally guilty. I bought the Mind Your Brain DVD, and I am one of those people that have not had a class yet. So you guys, you can be looking forward to that very soon um, because I cannot wait to start getting that information into people's hands. I think it's really critical. Um, the emotional release thing is fascinating to me. I do have a question. I'm going to kick off the questions. Hopefully the rest of you guys have your questions ready. Um, the, the words that you're repeating remind me a little bit of some of the things that I've learned in um, the tapping technique. So my question, mm -hmm. are there similarities or connections there um, between what you did and, and what I have, you know, done in the past with, with different tapping stuff? I am not possibly. I'm not super familiar with um, like the application of tapping. I totally believe in it. Um, and the the language is I learned from Dr. Allen, and I think it's an adaption of Dr. Carolyn Mind Mean stuff. Um, and I think it's just a similar script. Again, I like it because it's um, a real quick and easy one. Um, but you could absolutely combine it with tapping. Um, you could, I, I, when I've done it in sessions with people, oftentimes it's a combination of this and then maybe other things. Um, like we may, we may do other types of prayer or other types of uh, therapy methods. Uh, again, this is a very, very, uh, in a secular, in like, 
cognition terms, this would be similar to cognitive behavioral therapy in a very minute version. Yeah. So you could definitely combine it with tapping. Love it. Love it. Awesome. You guys, what questions do you have um, while we have Elizabeth's full attention? This is such a privilege. Is there anything that you would like to ask? You can either type it in the chat box or just go ahead and unmute yourself. <laughs> Thank you, Vicky. Y'all are stunned speechless. Just I did my I'm just kidding. <laughs> Totally. Scott, are you supposed to still be recording? Oh, I should end it. Uh, we'll continue on. It's okay. <laughs> um, somebody just asked what book I was showing at the end. It is a releasing emotional patterns. Sorry, the light in here is weird. Releasing emotional patterns using essential oils by Dr. Caroline. I think it's, is it Maine or mine? I say it's mine, but mine. Okay. Dr. Caroline mine, M E I N. And I think it's, through Life Science Publishing, so explorelsp.com. I don't remember who, I think it's LSP that publishes it. Um, but yeah, releasing emotional patterns through essential oils. And so it's what's really great is that it has uh, specific blends or you can look things up by, um, it's the EODR of emotions, yeah. basically. So it's kind of a nice, quick and easy resource if you're specifically using, um, if you're, yeah. If you're using that. And she, she has a, a real basic muscle testing kind of how to in there. Um, and so that's a lot of times people will combine that with muscle testing to find out what emotions I end up doing it typically more intuitively, um, or by hearing the language that someone is using. And often from there, I, I have a very strong impression on what the, what the emotion is. Cool. And I just typed in the chat box, another book that we have used in our group to partner with that one is The Feelings Buried Alive Never Die. And, yes. and that has been um, a, a super helpful dynamic duo, kind of. Yeah. And then the other one that I mentioned earlier um, is the, I can write in here, The Biology of Belief. Okay. Um, that is by Candice Kurt. And I believe that you can buy it. I mean, you can get it on Amazon, but I think you might be able to buy it through Growing Healthy Homes, the um, Hopkins publishing company. I think they sell that. Awesome. And that one is a little bit more of a memoir, so I don't think it's as practical, so that would be kind of, but if you're super interested in the topic, it's an interesting book to have. Very cool. You guys, are there any um, application questions, you know, taking this information, Remember, it's only as valuable as it is shared. So is there anything that, that you learned tonight from the perspective of sharing it with others that, that you have questions about? Elizabeth, you did fine work. That's all I can well, say. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and what I was going to say on the sharing, I, when I initially taught this, I had people wanting to share it, but they were like, but I can't teach it. I can't teach it. And that's why I created the DVD. So thank again, you. that's not a sales push, but it's there as a resource because I'm a big believer in um, people getting accurate information, but also making it, I'm a builder. So I get that like, we can't all know all of the information to teach 18 different classes. Exactly. So um, that is part of why um, I want people to absorb the information, but I also want them to share it easily. So that is something just, if you're feeling overwhelmed, you don't have to do it. <laughs> Thank you. And I, I'm Thank you so much for having me. You were, you were absolutely wonderful. I loved your PowerPoint. I love the information. So on behalf of all of us, Thanks. Elizabeth, thank you and have a wonderful evening. <laughs> thank you. Thanks y'all. Enjoy. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you.